Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors and thank you so much for joining us this week. We've got a lot of brand new stuff on this week's show and we're going to start in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula on Black Lake. Jenny Olson is going to take us up there for the annual sturgeon spearing season. Lots of tall tales and some really fun people up there, you won't want to miss that. We're also going to do a little perch fishing here in West Michigan and show you what that looks like. And of course, the only thing better than catching perch is eating perch. So we got a good perch recipe for you as well. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. by the Michigan Fly Fishing Club, presenting this year's 2019 Midwest Fly Fishing Expo. The expo is coming to Metro Detroit on March 9th and 10th at the Sports and Expo Center at Macomb Community College. For more information and details, MidwestFlyFishingExpo.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. On Friday night, celebration of the 2019 sturgeon season was in full swing at the Chivaree Tent on the shores of Black Lake here in Sheboygan. After a drum ceremony outside, the party moved inside for more fun. Over 200 anglers registered to take part in the spearing season that would begin the next morning at 8 a.m. This year, I met up with our good friend Keith Stanton to spend the season in his shanty. Good morning, Keith. Good morning. What are we doing? We're gonna give it a try, going after sturgeon. <laughs> this is this is not my forte. I feel good about being in a pike shack, but the sturgeon shack, it's a new experience, kind of. So um, we're just gonna go give it a heck. You can't uh, get them if you're not out here. So That's right. um, we're gonna give it a try. Well, we're setting up with some folks that have done it before. Uh, the one girl that's sitting by us missed one just a couple years ago. She's not gonna be happy with me for saying that on camera, but um, in, in the year we were up here, which was two years ago, four of the fish were taken down at this end. So, um, you know, we're in about 16 foot of water and we're just gonna hope for the best. It's kind of a, unless you live up here, it's kind of a, you know, throw a dart at a board and, and hope you luck out, but yeah. um, we'll see what we can do. So what we got here is just some uh, baby lima beans and they call it Black Lake for a reason. It is dark down there. So what we're doing is we're just going to throw a bunch down here and this will settle on the bottom and basically what it allows you to do is anything that crosses through your hole, the shadow is now going to kind of stick out. Well the experts for what I've been told is as quick as 26 minutes possibly. Um, from what everyone's been saying the fish have been really active the last few days. Uh, the only thing that could kind of thwart that is uh, with all the activity that's been on the ice here in the last 24 hours. Uh -huh. um, but the source, and it's a good source, uh, says it's going to be really quick. So, and that's kind of expected. You drive a long way up here, you do a lot of work, and it's over quick, but you have a lot of fun. So, <laughs> so what brought you up here? Um, big fish. I like big fish. Uh, and it, you know, spearfishing is just a passion of mine. And so, uh, 
you know you got to come up and give this a try if you're a spear fisherman i mean these fish are huge and it's just like pike spearing i mean same concept just a lot bigger fish bigger equipment there's a few small you know variances in, in method and technique and all that but all in all it's it's kind of the same thing so um this state is just filled with such unique and great opportunities like this one right here uh, where else can you go you know and, and do this besides wisconsin and of course we have the elk here and, and uh, that's what i love about this state there's so many opportunities so you got to get out there and, and try each and every one and see which which one you like best and and uh, just get outdoors Keith had his new sturgeon decoy ready to go and would be trying out a prototype spear that his buddy Larry Harris made for him. Larry ran through their strategic setup in the portable shanty. Well, we're in a portable shanty, and so the tricks of the portable shanty and trying to spear, you know, up to 150-pound fish is to, once you do get it, uh, is to not let it pull you in the hole, and it can't pull our shanty in the hole. So we've got some ice anchors down on either side of the hole itself, so our ropes will be anchored solid to that, not our shanty. Um, we are able to at least suspend our decoy over the hole through the shanty here, but uh, portable uh, spearing shacks are something we've been using to get out on many lakes in Michigan, and uh, you know this is uh, this is the way we got to live. Uh, you have to think uh, out of the box when you don't have a permanent shanty, and for the season being so short, this is just perfect for us to get up and get out. We've got the official DNR text message. The season has officially started. So come on fish. There's one right there on the edge. How big is he? Small, 16 inches, 18 inches. That was a sturgeon though. All he right. got about here and then turned and went right away. I don't think I would have speared that one. It was a little small, but. We need his daddy. We need his daddy. Even though it was too dark for the camera to see, having a sturgeon move through the hole made for an exciting start to the season. Keith and Larry took turns peeling their eyes away from the water to check the text updates from the DNR. I never did meet up with Steve Bodinger, who speared the first fish of the day, but the brother-sister duo of Stephanie Miller and Scott Kramer brought in the second and third fish of the morning. What in the world? Were you in the same shack? We were in the same shack. This is my brother. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> second year out here and... I was feeling good about the spot. He goes, you pick the spot. All right, let's go right here. He wasn't feeling good this morning. I'm like, I'm feeling it. And literally it swam. It kind of cut a corner. It was under his feet. He didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't even see it, so. And I literally said, Scott, grab my spear. And it was one of those bend over, hope God pray, and stuck him. All right, you got one. What happened with <laughs> so the So we yeah. literally got back from gave, registry. Came in here, registered it, and talked to my dad. He's like, well, what are you doing? You better get back, try and get yours. I'm like, well, that ain't a bad idea. You got all the crap ready, back ready to go, spears in the water. Walked in, wasn't even a minute, and <laughs> stuff says, hey, here comes one underneath your feet. <laughs> Look over, sure enough. Unbelievable. There it was. So, it was yeah. crazy. So do you guys spear back at home in Wisconsin? We do. Yep, next okay. weekend we'll be out. All right. So my last fish was in 2010, so it was awesome. And to be here, we thank everyone for this awesome time. Yeah. We definitely we look forward to it every year. Long trip here, but it's so worth it. Oh yeah, a lot of memories. <laughs> the morning was moving right along, with only three sturgeon left to tag before the season closed for the year. Uh, the DNR just sent us the text here, and uh, so far four fish have been taken. So we have two more fish, and then we'll be able to uh, close the season out. What time is it? Right now it's 9:11. Season started at 8, so we're an hour and 11 minutes in. The fourth fish belonged to Tim Raymond of Columbiaville, Michigan, and measured 60 and a half inches long and weighed 47.8 pounds. How many times have you been up here? This is my second year, first fish I ever seen down in the hole. Really? Yeah. Did, it look, uh, how, did it look crazy coming through? It the was hole? crazy. It come in one foot underneath the ice right underneath us. Really? One foot down. It was just bang, bang. You had no time. Oh, it was, it was. It was crazy. It's like buck having a big buck come in. You just it just happens fast. And you got it perfect. Got it's him. Like... Good shot. And I'm not a spear. I have hardly speared anything in my life. Nice. But job. I got this dude. And then what happened in that shanty? And then well, then we oh, then the spear was too long for the shanty, so he had the spear wedged into the ceiling and the fish wedged down there. By the time I got it out of there, one tine on the big spear was crooked. Oh, well, we got it outside and 
DNR was right there. They told me it was a frequent flyer. He was uh, tagged first in 2004 on the spawning beds in the river, tagged again in 2013, and again in 2017. Last year, still had the tag in it. They call it a frequent flyer. And it only, it was 56 inches in 04, and it's only 60 inches now. So in 15 years, it only grew four inches. Wow. Is that crazy or what? Yeah. That's Good what job. you come up here for. <laughs> Right on the heels of Tim's fish, Doug Bogner of Akiak speared the fifth sturgeon of the season right around 9.15 a.m. Okay, what number were you, do you know? I think either five or six. Okay. Yeah, right towards the end. Your first sturgeon of the <laughs> no, probably my second one, probably in 10 years. Okay, cool. A lot bigger than the other one. I won't mention that one. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> All right, congratulations. Did you get it measured? Right? Yes, I did. Yep, 54 inches, or uh, 54 pounds, 61 and a half inches. Nice, good job. We just heard the cannon, so I'd imagine the sixth fish has already been taken. 920, and I believe the season is over. That is it. 2019. That is a wrap. Cut. <laughs> well, we had fun. Can you just take your flag down? Okay. okay, thank you. They do a really good job. Really good here. job out here controlling everything oh. well it was lots of fun we at least seen one little one anyways i, I take that as partial win yeah well, it's keeps not on the ice. Uh, okay <laughs> right. maybe it was about this big it was uh, up high it was kind of cool to, to actually see something but what if one swims through right now i mean oh. that's like being tagged out on a big buck and then having a bigger one come through you know yeah <laughs> Oh, what did you say getting a sturgeon speared on camera would be like? Yeah, sturgeon and spearing on camera is like shooting a white unicorn during archery season, okay? It's, it's their, well, that never happens, I guess, but um, <laughs> it's, it's far and few between. But, you know, I, I can't say enough about the uh, sturgeon uh, for tomorrow, the Black Lake chapter. They do such a great job up here, the whole event, the tent and everything. If you have not ever experienced this and you're looking for something to do the first weekend in February, Come up here because you'll have a lot of fun. Whether you're fishing or not, it's just a, a good time in northern Michigan. A good time and an 80-minute long season. Once it was over, folks wasted no time pulling their shanties off the ice and making their way over to the Chivery Tent and DNR Check Station to see the successful anglers and their fish. As it turned out, the sixth and final fish of the day happened to be the biggest one of the season. Robert Daughter's fish taped out at six feet long and tipped the scales at 80.9 pounds, making Robert the newest Sturgeon Chivery King. He had an awesome story to go along with the biggest fish of the season. Thought I seen him over to the edge about 20 minutes earlier. I was looking way out far. I seen something big and black go by, and I thought, oh, gone, done. About 20 minutes later, he came right in on right underneath my spear, right in the bottom. Grabbed the spear and stuck him. Nice. Is this your first one? It's my first one. No. What was the secret decoy? Can you tell us? That was just an everyday run of the mill off the shelf decoy. Really? Yeah. What color? Color, white. Okay. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be an official sturgeon story here on the show if we didn't stop and talk to Black Lake's Sturgeon General, Brenda Archambo. Here we are on Black Lake, February 2nd, 2019, and sturgeon season uh, started at 8 o'clock. At 9.17, the sixth fish was harvested. There were 203 registered sturgeon anglers. It's awesome. Uh, it's a beautiful day. We've got the chivalry going on. Having the sustainability of having the opportunity to sturgeon fish, though it only be a few, is something that's very deeply entrenched in our culture, and we're grateful that we at least have that. Um, because as you can see, people really like it. They've galvanized around it, and it's really a part of who we are in, in our winter outdoor heritage. So we're all inclusive. People should come out, visit with us. First weekend in February is the chivalry, and then usually the first Saturday in February is the opening of sturgeon season. Special thanks to the Archambo family, the Black Lake chapter of Sturgeon for Tomorrow, the DNR, and all the volunteers who work year-round to ensure the success of a growing and healthy sturgeon population right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can see, that is a lot of fun up there for the sturgeon season. It might be something you want to check out next year. What we're going to do now is drop a little south and head a little west to Muskegon Lake to do a little perch fishing. <music>
a week or so back, I joined a couple of buddies out on Muskegon Lake. They got here early. I came after the heat was on and the fish were biting. Uh, I mean, it's, it started out, you know, kind of slow and then we figured out that they wanted a little bit more aggressive jigging, at least to start. And then it was hot and heavy and it's just kind of the school moves through. So gangbusters for like 10 minutes and then, hmm. and then it slows down. And then it, when it seems to slow down, it's the running the live minnows on the Haley jig seems to be what they want. When they come back through, it's anything you can get down as fast as you can get it down. Hmm. So hoping to come back through with some size. One thing about Aaron and Grant is they fish all over the state. And in fact, we're just back from a little beta knock where the fishing was pretty tough. Yeah, I went up there with high hopes. Well, it's always, I always want to get a big, big walleye through the ice jigging, but boy, it was a tough trip for us. Uh, Short walleye, no shortage of those. Okay. But uh, it was tough. Hmm. It was a tough year. We we got a couple legal pike, um, nice white fish, some some jumbos, but not the walleye we were after. But now, do you guys fish up there a lot? We do a yearly trip, four okay. or five years. Okay. Um, we've been doing it five six years maybe. But um, you know, it's like Grant was saying, we pick a week, we take that weekend off of work. Yeah. And that's what we're dealt with. Well, you know, if the weather, we deal with the weather conditions fishing's good or bad that's that's when we're there so yeah um last year was awesome last year was good mm -hmm. uh this year not so much but it's fun man we cross the bridge get up north it's always good to do that so and, and how'd you guys pick muskegon for today um we just like getting into perch we get a lot of perch in the summer out of south haven and we know there's a good bite here on muskegon so we got into them last year finally for the first time fishing here okay. and uh nothing better than a bucket of perch to take <laughs> home so <laughs> well it is hard to beat a bucket of perch and even though we were doing some sorting today for size well the fish were pretty steady hey. there we go he's, he's a good, good fish he'd messed with it for way too long i want to hold some salt oh yeah <laughs> He's about to get a little bit of a Drake's bath. <laughs> that, that's how you do it right there, right? Yeah, just like a professional. Ish. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I had that fish on the screen and he just kept hitting and I just couldn't get it. And finally I was going to check this one and set it down. As soon as I set it down, then he smoked it. So when you were touching it, you were screwing it up. Yeah, so don't touch the rod. <laughs> You know, I'm pretty good as long as I don't touch anything. <laughs> that's that's pretty much how it works. Too bad. Good color. Yeah, pretty fish. And I was like, I need this thing. This is gonna be. Just, don't look. That could be your record. <laughs> I know. Look real close. He's there. <laughs> Oh, him just a widow guy. <laughs> the old Still coming up. Hammered gold pimple. So the jigging is working more than the dead stick. Here. Yeah, it's been switching off all kind of all day. Well, you're out fishing Grant right now. Yeah, Grant. How many? Do the count. How's that? Why don't you do the count? <laughs> see who's got more. I don't know, man. We're close. It's, it's got to be close, but I still think I got it. Ooh. Might be, might be two tacos. He might be enough for a full sale. Yeah, Duke, he creamed it. He's not huge. He'll eat. The chubby little guys. Yeah, he smoked it. When a good perch bite is happening, whether it's in the summer or on the hard water, news travels pretty fast. Now, today was not fast and furious, but if you stuck at it most of the day, you would have a nice mess of fish. One thing for all perch anglers out there is that the limit of perch is changing starting April 1st here in the state of Michigan. The limit that has been 50 for many years is being changed to 25 starting April 1. Lake Erie and Lake Gogebic limits are staying at 50, but in all other waters, the limit goes to 25, which to be fair is still a lot of fish. It will be interesting to see what kind of changes that does to the overall perch population here in our great state. He's a big one. Whoa! There we go. That's a decent one there. That might be a good one to end on there, man. Pretty good for you. <laughs> 
go ahead and stop. Well, see you later. It was time to pack up with each angler having about 25 or 30 keepers. A great day for sure. If you don't have an ATV, go buy a deer drag. Yeah, that's a ticket? I'm telling you, it makes it pulling 100 times easier. Huh. So explore by sled or by foot. There is probably some hard water near you that is holding some fish. Good luck out there here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, hey, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill. We're outside of Big Rapids in the Canadian Lakes area here with Jim Wood, and we are gonna do one of my favorite things to try is perch. And so always looking for a new recipe. Jim, what are we gonna do here today? Uh, we're gonna use a batter that we've done in the past with okay. the uh, perch stuffed mushrooms. And we're gonna fry it, and then we're gonna toss it in uh, sweet chili mayo, so oh. almost kind of a play on fish and tartar sauce. Okay, a little spicy? It's got a little bit of spice to it. It's more sweet than it is spicy. Okay, well now do this batter again because I remember the first time you did it, it was it was pretty simple and it's really, really light. It's light. Yep. Okay, so how do we start with this? So we start with some cold soda water. And what is soda water? How is that, just because it's carbonated or? Yeah, it's got carbonation. Okay. Effervescence. Nice, yep. big word. Yeah, I learned that one in culinary and that school. Is... This is whipped egg yolks okay. and whites, so it's whipped eggs, basically. Okay. Now whisk that together. And the more you whisk it, the lighter it's gonna get, because you, as you see, you're creating bubbles. So you're, you're whipping air into this. All right, and then we've got some salt, baking powder, and then the cake and then batter. Your cake flour. Cake flour. Cake Sorry. Cake batter, I think, is an ice cream. <laughs> That's one of my too. faves. <laughs> nice. So we're gonna whisk that all up. As you can see, it's really frothy. Yep. And not nearly as thick as a regular batter. Okay. A lot of batters you'll see almost like a pancake consistency, right. which is not really my deal. Okay. So, that's the batter. All right, so now we're gonna make the sauce. Here we've got a little bit of mayonnaise. We're gonna add some soy sauce to it. Whisk that up. A lot of whisking in your stuff. Yes, big fan of whisking. Mm. So it's not, this isn't gonna be as thick as a traditional tartar sauce. Okay. And then we've got some sweet Asian chili sauce here. Asian chili sauce. Now, how hot is that? It's not hot at all. Oh, okay. Now, if you wanted it to be hot, you could add something like sriracha. Okay. So, uh, depending on how hot you like it. Yep. And if you've ever been to, say, some corporate uh, Asian American restaurants that serve something called bang bang shrimp, mm -hmm. this is kind of a play on that. Oh, okay. So. All right, that's our sauce. Easy. So now we deep fry the fish. Now we're gonna deep fry the fish. To fry the fish, simply dredge the fillets in cake flour and put them into the batter. Next, they're ready for the deep fryer. It should only take a couple of minutes to finish. Okay, so we're done frying here. Yep, we got these light, crisp, tender morsels of Boy, those did puff up quite a greatness. bit though. They do. We're gonna hit them with a little bit of salt. Okay. And then we're gonna take some of our sauce, kind of drizzle it on there. Okay. Wow. And then we're just gonna to toss these around. Hmm. And you take them with the sauce, just put them in this serving vessel. And the name of this is? Tempura fried perch sweet Asian mayo. Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. We sure do appreciate it. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week. And we're also on all the different social media sites if you want to see what we're up to on a more day-to-day -day basis. And if you do the YouTube thing, you can actually subscribe to our channel there, Michigan Out of Doors TV, and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. So hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by 
by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoorama February 28th through March 3rd at Novi's Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoorama in Novi, February 28th through March 3rd. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe. St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above